Today I'm here in Tokyo and I found something really cool that I want to show you guys. Hang on, I, I gotta get it. It's tiny and it's, it's buried in my pocket. That is a little tiny wireless LED. So it doesn't have any batteries, and it doesn't, you don't connect it with any wires, and it lights up. It's like magic. And I just dropped it. <laughs> That wasn't on purpose. Uh, I guess it's good that I have more than one. Anyway, I, I found it here at Yorobashi, which is ostensibly a chain camera store here in Japan. Um, but it's really this amazing department store that sells just about everything, from model trains to toilet seats to wine. Um, they even have a, a few cameras. It's total stimulation overload. There's signs everywhere and flashing things and music and talking and video and I've spent hours in there. But I found this really cool display that had these wireless LEDs. Now, these are for uh, model makers. Like Gunpla is huge here, which is like uh, like models of, of robots. You know, you wanna make your robot light up, but you don't wanna have to run wires through it and uh, you don't wanna like have to have batteries that you change. So the idea is that you put these little LEDs in it and then you put them on this stand and they light up magically. My guess is that this works very similar to how wireless charging works on your phone. Uh, but I really want to get one and try it out. Unfortunately, Yodobashi doesn't have any in stock. They only have the LEDs. So I bought a kit of LEDs. So now I'm off to see if I can go find a wireless base somewhere uh, at maybe another store here in Akihabara. I found the Japanese website of the company that makes these. Uh, this thing's called an X-Base. And uh, they list a bunch of stores here in Tokyo that should have these things in stock. So I'm headed over to Bic Camera, which is uh, yeah, pretty similar to Yodobashi. struck out again. I did find the X-Base display, but uh, it looks pretty neglected and they were totally sold out of everything. I'm starting to think maybe this will be a little bit harder to find than I thought. Uh, I don't know. It, it, I'm kind of getting the sense that maybe this is a failed product and all the stores are just trying to get rid of their stock uh, while there's still some latent demand here. I took another look at the website and it looks like they ran a Kickstarter in 2017, but that now they're run by this faceless megacorp toy corporation called HappyNet. And, uh, I don't know, it makes me think like, HappyNet, the source of all of your corporate happiness needs. I, I don't know, it, it, <laughs> it just makes me laugh. Speaking of faceless, I, I can't even find an email address or any other way to contact them on their website. I'm beginning to think if I can't find one of these bases, maybe we're gonna have to build one? It can't be that hard, right? <laughs> But I'm not willing to give up on buying one just yet. Uh, I'm off to the next store here. It's listed on the website as, as called Vort, V-O-R-T, which I, I don't know, it, it says uh, outlet store. So I don't, oh, we'll see what it is. was not what I was expecting. Some serious like anime otaku action going on in there. But I did find, uh, they've got a whole hobby floor. They had some X bases. I bought one. It was a bit more expensive than I thought it was gonna be. It was 200 bucks US. And then it was another 30 for the LEDs that I bought over at Yorobashi. So uh, I guess I'm reaching the conclusion that Japanese are very serious about their hobbies. So this hotel room is really small. It's Tokyo, but the most important part, I wanna try this out. There are screws. I do not have a screwdriver. Oh, just the power supply. I feel like there is a coil up here and screws are necessary to connect where the power supply plugs into the bottom. I'm gonna need a screwdriver. Dang it.
I think we've safely established that I have no idea where to buy a screwdriver here. <laughs> I keep looking. I, I, got this I still totally can't figure out how to say that without tripping over my tongue most of the time. I'll figure it out one of these days. Okay, <laughs> I finally got a screwdriver. <laughs> Let's try this now. Oh yeah, that looks great. So they light up most when they're against these surfaces, but I think also they don't do too bad out in the open. So that is it right there. I mean, the big question is like, how do these things work? And I read somewhere that it is um, something about magnetic field coupling. Basically, I think there are two coils of wire. Uh, I think there's one here, and I think there's one here. And then there is a little coil in this guy. You can see that there. And basically, it's just creating a little transformer in the air. So there's a magnetic field here and that magnetic field that's caused by the coil here is causing a current through the uh, coil here, um, which then causes the LED to light up. On this thing, we've got copper wire here in a coil and that's soldered onto a little PCB here. And then there are two capacitors, it looks like one on either side, and then the LED in the middle. I was thinking probably the next step here is to remove this sticker here that says warranty void if removed and uh, see what's going on inside. So indeed, it is exactly what I thought. There is one giant coil here, uh, and then we have a driver circuit here, which is probably creating the alternating current. Looks like two little PCBs here this one's just for the LEDs, and this one's just for the power to mount the power jack on, and then we've got our on-off switch. So this is gonna be pretty simple. Um, I wanna pop open the other one and just see if there's anything inside it, because there's no, there's no connectors. How does this work? Okay. I no longer know what I'm talking about. I'm guessing these are two big capacitors and a coil and no wiring connecting it to anything else. <laughs> We're officially over my head. I kind of would like to figure out how this works. My thought was, well, if I can't find a base, maybe I'll just build my own. And there are plenty of parts in Akihabara for me to go do that. So I, I still think I'd kind of like to, to either do that, either build my own base or um, build my own LEDs. But I kind of want to understand how the base works. So. I think the next step is maybe to do some Googling to see if I can get a better understanding of what black magic is, is behind this thing. So Googling chip numbers is one of the best ways to figure out how something works. It's a wireless power transmitter. <laughs> Funny that. It has been developed with high efficient power technology for electronic power, portable devices such as mobile phones, laptop, and LED lighting. This might be the chip that's in your standard like uh, wireless charging mat that you would put like your iPhone on. I found a couple PDFs <laughs> and specifically I found one about LED lighting bricks without wires nor batteries. That looks exactly like what we have and that looks pretty familiar too. It could be that what we're looking at is just a white labeled version of Power Republic's like design. I think this is an off-the-shelf rebranding. I thought X-Base had done something cool, but they just did a Kickstarter on somebody else's design. Mm. The plot thickens. All right, so I found two Kickstarter campaigns that seem to be based off the same technology that isn't theirs, and they claim that they, it's patent pending. Oh, this is a Power Republic board. <laughs> I'm willing to bet this whole thing is Power Republic's board or assembly and they just put their own sticker on it. Happy net. I think we should tear apart one of the little little guys. Okay, so we have one wire. We have the circuit board on top. Then we have the, the coil here that's soldered on both sides. It's soldered here to the PCB and then here. So that's just a loop of wire going around and around and around. Spindle, I'm gonna break that off. Success. So that does answer my question, which is that it doesn't appear like there are any chips on the bottom side of this. So I think it it really is uh, 
just a matter of uh, the two capacitors and the coil and the LED. I, I don't think there's anything else to this. Okay, so I'm here at, at dinner with my friend Shane, who just uh, put this on his, his wireless Qi charger here, and it totally works. That's pretty amazing. I mean, not reliably, but like, enough. And I, I think that's the Qi charger like waiting until it has something to charge. Like I think it's trying to sense for a phone there. And then it will like, yeah. Oh, well, there you go. That is pretty cool. Awesome. Well done. <laughs> you figured out more than I have in two days. <laughs> so, in theory, we should be able to make at least this part ourselves. I think that's the next mission, is to go over to Akihabara and buy some LEDs and some capacitors and some wire. Let's see if I can make one of these. Some, some cutters. I think this one's better. Yeah, okay. Yeah, perfect. Okay, bye bye. Uh, is this coated? Yeah. Does this have a coating? Oh, yeah, yes, yes. Coated. 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 Poly okay. Perfect. Okay. perfect. Perfect. Okay. Then just these three. Okay. Yeah. from Akihabara, that ended up being quite a bit more expensive than it would have been in Shenzhen. Uh, prices are definitely higher here. Um, but I've got a soldering iron, I've got some cutters, I just got the basics in the end. I've got some components, I <laughs> bought one by one, which was amazing. Let's see, wire and a wireless charger, because I want to use this for testing. Where are, I have LEDs, where are the LEDs? All right, let's try this again. I had to go all the way back to Akihabara to get more LEDs, I don't know what happened to them. So here's one of these little things, and my thought, it has two capacitors on it, and an LED, and a wire coil around, I think, a ferrite core here. And so my thought is, can I uh, replicate that with just creating a coil out of wire, and then I've got, I've got a, bunch of, uh, a bunch of capacitors that I bought, and um, can I get it to light up? I also bought some um, ferrite chokes. Uh, which are, are basically exactly what this coil is. They're bigger. Couldn't find any that were that small. I figured we'd give those a try as well. Let's start. I've kind of got three sizes of wire. I think I'm going to take the 0.08 wire and wind a little coil. And then maybe let's just start by soldering that onto an LED. I think I should open the window to avoid setting off the smoke detector. Yeah, okay, that works. Things you are not supposed to really do in your hotel room, but shh. I want something cylindrical to wrap it around. Here, this is the hotel pen. Put this LED sort of across like that. Okay, so I'm just gonna use this uh, base. It's a bit right under here. So these are lighting up. This one, not so much. So it could be the missing capacitors. It could be not enough wire, like not enough big enough choke. I'm gonna try one of these big chokes. I'm gonna put that with uh, with the LED and see see where we get to. Well, there you go. Um, <laughs> it really might be that simple. Just a uh, a ferrite choke and an LED. No capacitors needed. No uh, no funky engineering. I want to play around with uh, 
making a coil without the ferrite and seeing if I can get it working. Eh, it'll feel a little more DIY, I think. I have the bag from the LED shop. Paper roll of this and then wrap the wire around there. Nothing. I did a bunch of homework uh, last night and this morning, and I think I have figured out what my problem is. I just need to make it bigger. Specifically, I need to make the diameter bigger. The formula for inductance of a coil is relative to the diameter of that coil, and as the diameter gets bigger, the inductance gets stronger. So, I went downstairs and I got a plastic cup and I figured I'd make a coil around here and see if that uh, does better. Okay, that's what I've got. Let's hope this is enough, because number of turns matters too. So now I'm just gonna wind this around to hold it together. I think I'm gonna try a white LED. Okay. Hmm. So I went and got more wire and I made a bigger coil. Check this out. Oh, wow. Okay, that is totally working. I wanna see if this works with this USB charger. So let's see, let's unplug the big power base here. Okay, here we go. Oh, wow. That's amazing. And the crazy part is I think you could make this at home pretty easily. This is literally just an LED and a copper of coil wire, a coil of copper wire. Let's see, let me measure roughly how big this thing is. Six centimeters in diameter. If you wanna do your own wireless LED kit at home, if you got a soldering iron, some uh, fine copper wire and an LED, this should work. This should light up just about any LED. This, this, uh, th there's clearly a fair amount of voltage here. So let me get a rough count. Roughly 60 windings, six centimeters in diameter. And then this wire, 36 gauge. And you don't need the fancy base, you just need a uh, Qi wireless charger, at least to get it to blink. That's that's pretty darn cool. That's uh, definitely thanks to Shane here for figuring that out, for trying it on his Qi charger, on his uh, wireless power bank. This is about my end of my time here in Tokyo. This has been kind of a weird adventure into figuring out how something off the shelf that's for a very niche market works and then figuring out how we can replicate it. I'm Scotty from Strange Parts. I hope you enjoyed this adventure as much as I did. Hit that subscribe button down below so that you're notified of future videos. I'll see you again soon.